In this video, I want to look at a few identities and talk about where they come from. The first one I'm just going to state here is the sum and difference identities. Um, the proof of this is just going to be a little bit too long. Um, you can find them uh, online or in a book and in the in the OpenStax pre-calc book. So feel free to look that up. It's a geometric proof that I think they use. But this is the outcome that sine of two different angles, theta and phi, is going to be you know sine of theta times cosine of phi plus that. And then you can see one for each of these cases. This, these are called the sum and difference identities because there are sum and differences inside of that. Now, what happens if instead of using two different angles, we use the same angle? So um, we have sine of theta plus theta. Well, that of course gives us sine of two theta, and that's what, call, what we're gonna be calling the double angle. It's two times theta. We get sine theta times cosine theta plus cosine theta times sine theta. That's the same thing as sine theta times cosine theta. We get just two sine theta cosine theta. Doing the same thing in cosine um, theta plus phi, we're gonna get cosine squared of theta minus sine squared of theta for the double angle identity. And for tangent, we're gonna get uh, tangent, uh, two, two tangent theta on top, and then here we're gonna get one minus tangent squared on bottom. Now, we're gonna consider this one a little bit more closely. So let's, let's look at that one. And you can see we have um, cosine of two theta equals cosine squared theta minus sine squared. But of course, cosine squared is the same thing as one minus sine squared. And if we already have a sine squared, that means we can add those two things together. We get one minus two sine squared. And that's another version of the double angle uh, identity for cosine. Likewise, we could instead change sine squared into cosine. Like here, I changed cosine squared to sine. So now I want to change um, sine squared into cosine. And I get distribute the negative one, where I get two cosine squared theta minus one. That gives another version of the double angle identity. Now we can take these two identities that we've just found and um, change them around a little bit. And that's going to give us the power reducing because we have both cosine squared and sine squared. This gives us a way to go from a sine squared power to a lower one by just rearranging these equations. So I'm going to um, you know subtract one and then divide by negative two. So we get sine squared gives us this. But of course, you can move the negative to the top and flip the things around. That's going to give us this power reducing identity. And likewise, with this with this bottom um, double angle formula, I can uh, move it around, add one, then divide by two. That's going to give us the power reducing identity for cosine. It's important to note that both sine and cosine are reduced down to a cosine trig um, function instead of a sine going down to sine, for instance. All right, what about tangent squared? Well, we can take this whole thing. Tangent squared is sine squared over cosine squared, and we just found what it is for sine squared. Sine squared is this. We're gonna plug that into there. And cosine squared is here. So we're gonna plug that into there. Doing that gives us this formula. I can, they're both divided by two, so you can actually cancel that out. And then I can rearrange the bottom one so it looks like one plus, and that makes it a little bit, a little bit cleaner to look at. So tangent squared also gets power reduced down into cosine uh, two theta and you know one minus cosine two theta and one plus cosine two theta. So it always gets power reduced down to cosine. Now for the these um, ones that we just looked at, let's plug in the half angle of alpha over two in for theta. So wh wh wherever you see theta, let's plug in alpha over two. That's gonna give us the half angle identities. So with this first one, um, what sine squared is, if you plug in alpha over two into here and here, 
you see we're going to get this just becomes sine squared alpha over 2. This, of course, becomes alpha over 2 here. But 2 times alpha over 2 is just alpha. And we can take the square root of both sides. Whenever you take a square root, you have to add a plus or minus in there. And so we get this statement for the half angle of sine. Now taking this, this power reduction formula, doing the same thing, plugging in alpha over 2 for both theta, both of the thetas. We're going to get cosine squared alpha over 2, 2 times alpha over 2 just becomes alpha. And then taking the square root of both sides, that's going to give us this half angle identity. For tangent, very similar. Um, this just becomes alpha on top, alpha on bottom, and take the square root, we get this um, half angle identity. It's important to note that we're not writing um, identities for cosecant, secant, and cotangent because those can all be transferred into sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, the plus or minus in front of all of these things is a little confusing, so let's look at an example here. Uh, if alpha equals 90 degrees, then we know that that cosine of alpha, cosine of 90 degrees, is zero. Alpha over 2 is 45 degrees. Cosine of alpha over 2 is not plus or minus, right? This is not plus or minus anything. It's just root 2 over 2. But you can see using the half, half angle identity, it gives us plus or minus root 2 over 2. So we really only have the plus, the, the plus version in this case. The plus or minus does not mean there are two answers but it really depends upon the angle you're working with. It's just telling you that there is a positive version and a negative version that is available to you depending upon the angle you're looking at. Really, you have to consider the case and you can then consider which version it is. If alpha equals 90 degrees, for instance, then cosine of alpha over two is root two over two, I just showed that. But if alpha is 270 degrees, alpha over two here is gonna be negative, or is gonna be 135 degrees, right? And that's going to give us negative root 2 over 2 because this is in quadrant 2 and cosine in quadrant 2 is negative. 